Hey everybody, it's Physical Friday. We've been going down the road of making some big changes, whether that's losing weight, gaining strength, getting a new job, getting, you know, a new license, making a big change in your life. And uh, we've had some homework, read James Clear's book, Atomic Habits. That is a fantastic resource. Um, I hope that that has helped you to to kind of form a roadmap. So we get to, we get, <laughs> we have the text that a lot of people have been sending uh, things to the text, the accountability text. Uh, appreciate that. That's, that's really cool. Um, good to hear from you. And I'm glad that, uh, that you trust me to be part of this with you. It's very cool. A lot of people want to lose weight. A lot of people want to um, change their diet and, uh, and move into something else, lose weight, gain strength, something, something that requires a diet of some sort. Now, I am not a diet expert, but I am a, um, an expert in figuring out how to stick with something. So I don't think it really matters what diet you pick, and that's between you and your doctor, your nutritionist, whoever. Whatever that diet may be that is determined to be best for you, awesome. Go for it. Now, I can tell you how to stick with it because I've done that many times myself. And um, I've seen things that work with my own uh, diet and things that do not work. And um, the one thing that is very important, I think, is is sticking with it. So if you're a nutrition your nutritionist and or your doctor and you come up with a with a plan that calls for, you know, f like a zone type plan, very conservative diet plan. 40% of your calories come from carbohydrates, 30 from fat, 30 from protein. Very conservative. That's something that's called the zone. A lot of diets are similar to that, maybe maybe a little higher in one, a little lower in the other. But basically, you have a roadmap of the way that your doctor or nutritionist or or whatever tells you to eat, and you need now it's your job to stick with it. Okay, that is where I can help. I know how to do that. That has has been something that I've been able to do in environments where it is difficult to do, like on the boat in fishing tournaments while we're fishing while we're filming. TV shows, in situations to where I have no place to cook, situations where uh, I don't even have a refrigerator, and you have a pretty strict diet plan that you need to follow, and um, I have been able to both do that and also fail miserably at that. So these are the things that have helped me to do it. And I can assure you that when I am doing it, it's, it's great. When I'm not doing it, uh, as, as good as I am at eyeballing things and tr having good um, discipline and self-control, I get off the plan and, and your goals go out the window. So some of the things that I can suggest is that this is one of the most important tools to any diet. I don't care what diet it is, whether it's keto, paleo, zone, um, whatever it may be, food scale is hugely important. It's hugely important. You may not have to stick with this and measure everything that you eat for the rest of your life. A lot of people would think that's terrible. They would never do that. But it is really important to get an idea of how much a, a, a half an ounce or how much a cup is, or how much, you know, uh, eight ounces is. Because if you're anything like me, eight ounces, <laughs> when I put it on a food scale, is a lot less than I thought it was. So it is very important to be able to start to measure the food, weigh the food, and get it to the portions that your your nutritionist, your dietitian is telling you, your doctor is telling you that is what you're supposed to be eating. So the food scale is really super important. Another thing is measuring cup. Like I love oatmeal. You get a cup of oats and that's what your diet calls for. 
<laughs> I thought it was like as much as this whole cup. And so I used to eat that much. Well, it's not. The cup is that much. And when you put it in the pan, when you put it in the bowl, it's really, it's really not that much. So you don't have to weigh and measure always. But I think that it is really important as you go down a new road of new foods and new portions that you learn how to eyeball it. And the only way you're going to know how to eyeball it is the same thing with a fish. How do you know what a what a 40-pound tarpon looks like if you've never weighed one? How do you know what a 12-pound bonefish looks like eyeballing it if you've never had one of those on the scale? A person that can look at a fish and say, that's a 12-pound bonefish, has seen a lot of fish on the scale. Largemouth bass, for example, large or bass fishermen are excellent at this because they go to the weigh-ins, they see all these fish all the time and they see them put on the scale. They are experts at looking at something and seeing exactly how big it is. That's what you're going to need to do with your food. You're going to need to weigh it and measure it enough to where you can look at some, at a steak and say, that's way too much. I can't eat that much. I'm not supposed to eat that much. I need half that. Okay, whatever it is, you're going to get there by weighing and measuring your food for a while. If you're like me, I prefer to just continue to do it because I like to eat a lot and I overeat all the time unless I'm weighing and measuring. Now, the next thing about um, food is preparation. So whatever plan you have, I don't care what the plan is. You are going to have a set menu that you're supposed to eat or that you can eat or set ingredients that you're supposed to eat certain portions of, and you can set your week schedule. Some diets will tell you exactly what to eat on exactly what day at exactly what time. That's great, but you're still going to need to put it together. So if you're supposed to have, you know, a chicken breast and salad at lunch every day, but you're going to actually have to cook the chicken, you're probably going to get off track. So meal prep is hugely, hugely, hugely important. The meal prep is probably the most important, even more so than going to the gym, even more so than um, the accountability portion that we've been talking about. If you find the diet that works for you, you have to stay on it. And if you aren't prepared with your food and you have to go shopping every time that you need a meal, it's probably not going to work for you. That's just a fact of the matter, man. It's probably just not going to work for you. But if you can do things that make it easier not to fail than to fail, like we've been talking about, you are probably going to be able to stay on that plan. Now, that plan, again, that's up to you and your doctor. This is how you stay on it. You can get things like these little containers. This one's my favorite. This little container sectioned off. Like when you're a kid, put your applesauce in one side and your other stuff in the other side so it doesn't get wet. Sectioned off. You got your carbs on one side. You got your, your protein on the other. Fat somewhere mixed in. These things can be the difference between staying on the diet, getting off the diet. So when, when I'm really moving towards a, a certain goal, say it's weight loss, Sundays are going to become my meal prep day to where I'm going to be able to go shopping, get all the ingredients that, that I might need. I'm going to have time to set the week's schedule. And then I'm going to have time to weigh and measure the food, put them into containers like this, and be ready for the week. And if I'm really going after it, I'll have the whole week's worth of food in the refrigerator ready to go. So breakfast and lunch or, or, or lunch comes out like this, goes right in a cooler. I go off on my way. So I know that I, am, I have exactly what I need to eat for that day. So these little containers in a cooler, man, that is the way that you'll stay on it. No matter what that diet is, no matter what it is. You'll have the food that you need. It'll be prepared. And all you have to do is open one of these things up and eat it. That's a lot easier than not having something. Next thing you know, you're going into the pantry. You're grazing. You're found the potato chips. Now you're, you're, you're gone. It's off. You're, you're, you're off the rails. 
you eat the potato chips. Next thing you know, you're eating ice cream. It's, it's crazy. I know I've been there. I go there all the time, but not when I'm preparing the meals. So meal prep is Sunday. Sunday is the day that you get your, your, your week scheduled together. You get at least half the week prepped on Sunday. Then you have the opportunity to have your meals ready to go. You put those meals in a cooler, you go fishing. You put those meals in the cooler, you go to work. You put those meals in the cooler, you go, and you don't eat anything but what's in the, in the containers. You'll stay on the plan. You will. You'll stay on the plan. And that plan is probably a good one because you got it from an expert, and, uh, and it's, it's custom made for you. So that is the deal for today, Physical Friday, the importance of weighing and measuring your food. And then the importance of meal prep. It cannot be overstated. Having all that ready, I mean, that is the way to go. That is the way to go. It's like going fishing and and realizing what lure you need and then having to run to the store to go go get it instead of having it right there in your tackle box. You're never going to catch any fish like that. Same thing with diet. You figure out, you and your doctor figure out what diet you're going to be on. Get it all prepped. That's your job. Get it all prepped, ready to go. You have it. You're prepared. Chances of you going off the rails like that? Zero. All right. Physical Friday for today. We'll see you next week. Bye.